America has a drug problem. Everyone knows that. But few people realize that the drugs that are by far the most widely used and that do by far the most damage are alcohol and nicotine. These drugs are also two of our most heavily advertised products. Let's begin with a look at the advertising for our deadliest drug, which is nicotine. Nicotine doesn't damage the fabric of society in quite the way that alcohol and other drugs do, but it certainly kills more people than all other drugs combined. Cigarettes kill more Americans each year than alcohol, cocaine, heroin, car crashes, homicides, suicides, and AIDS combined. Nothing else comes close. This is over 440,000 deaths every single year. Now, we all know that advertising often lies, but nowhere is that more obvious than in cigarette ads. We have all these young, healthy people alive with pleasure, which I'm sure beats dead with cancer as a slogan, but it's certainly not the truth. Men are told they owe their freedom, their independence, indeed their masculinity to their Marlboros, although the evidence is clear that cigarettes are linked with lower testosterone count, sterility, and impotence. But I guess we couldn't expect truth in advertising, could we? As one medical expert said, smoking is clearly hazardous to your erection. Did you know that Marlboros began as a cigarette designed for women? The cigarettes came with red tips so the lipstick wouldn't show. They were so thoughtful. But Philip Morris, the makers of Marlboro, fairly quickly realized that this was not a good idea. Women will almost always use a product designed for men, but God forbid that a man would use a product designed for women. How many men do you know who smoke Virginia Slims? So they repositioned Marlboro as the ultimate man's cigarette with the image of the cowboy, which of course has been phenomenally successful. Marlboro is the leading cigarette brand in the world. More people who smoke, women as well as men, girls as well as boys, smoke Marlboros by far than any other brand. Over half of all teenage smokers in America smoke Marlboros. And there's no mystery why. It's the most heavily advertised cigarette by far. Today, in spite of all the attention that's been paid to tobacco recently, the tobacco industry, just in the United States, spends over $9 billion every year in advertising and promotion. $9 billion. That's over $26 million every day. Yet they swear that this advertising has no effect. It doesn't influence anyone. They say the whole point of all that advertising is just to get adult smokers to switch brands. This couldn't possibly be true. About 10% of smokers switch brands every year, and this includes smokers who switch within a brand, going to lighter versions of the same brand, for example. 10%, certainly not enough to warrant $9 billion worth of advertising. Feature films have also turned into marketing opportunities for tobacco companies. A recent study found that smoking occurred in feature films much more frequently than in real life. And countless studies have proved a link between smoking in films and increased smoking by kids. The tobacco industry knows that placing a cigarette in the hands of sexy and popular stars is the best way to glamorize its product, in the eyes of young people especially. Cigarette? No. Now let's take a look at how our other major drug is sold, alcohol. The alcohol industry spends $3 billion a year on advertising. Alcohol advertising is really our main form of alcohol education. Our attitudes about alcohol have been shaped primarily by the alcohol industry. Just as the tobacco industry swears they don't target children, so does the alcohol industry. But of course they do. They use cartoon characters, talking frogs, talking lizards, all kinds of techniques that are designed to attract children. But wiser. All right, we're charming. I wanna charm it with you. They have to attract children, because the younger people are when they start drinking, the greater the risk of addiction. If you start drinking when you're 15, you're four times more likely to become an alcoholic than if you wait till you're older. Addiction is bad news for most of us, 
but it's the name of the game for the alcohol and tobacco industries. They want to get young people because when you hook them early, they are yours for life. The alcohol industry also targets young people via the internet. One study found that over 80% of beer websites and over 70% of distilled spirits websites use techniques that are particularly attractive to underage audiences, as compared with only 10% of wine websites. These techniques include cartoon characters and trendy rock bands. Now, for you music fans, the music section on Budweiser.com is the place to find today's hottest bands. The alcohol industry has taken over whole worlds that are important to young people. The world of music. The Rolling Rock Town Fair is taking over Pittsburgh's Heinz Field July 26th. The world of sports. NBA playoffs. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Life is best told over a great tasting Miller Lite at a place called Miller Time. The college market is especially important to the alcohol industry because college students drink more than their non-college peers. The college alcohol market is an over $5 billion a year market, and college students in America spend more money on alcohol than on books. What can we do about all of this? Obviously, we need to get people into treatment. We need to treat alcoholics. We need to treat the children of alcoholics. We need to help smokers quit. All of this is extremely important. But most important, we need to work on prevention. We need to stop these problems before they start. This means addressing these issues as public health issues. The obsession with thinness is a public health issue. Violence against women is a public health issue. High-risk drinking, smoking are all public health issues. And public health issues can be solved only by changing the environment. That means taking the focus off the individual and putting it on the whole world in which the individual lives, the world that influences the choices that people make. 